The latest version of CapCut Desktop for PC is 4.3.0 Beta. Let's see what changed. On the good news front, you can finally increase the size of timeline tracks a little. This is the default size that we're used to. Come over here to the left of the track and just go down to the bottom of it. Your mouse pointer will switch to this little guy, click and drag. And that's as far as you can go. There ain't no more. Now you can shrink the height all the way down until it's just a title on there. But when it comes to making it taller, this is the max. It's an improvement, I'll take it. For those of us that look at the waveform to edit, this is long overdue. If you have a compound clip where you have the audio and video in one track, where it displays the video and the waveform in the single track, the waveform is still pretty small, relatively. Taking a look at the top left at the materials panel, I see that AI characters has returned to this menu area, and it looks like all the AI characters that we have seen in various different versions, some of them have come and gone apparently, looks like they have all returned here along with some new AI characters that I don't think I've seen before. The AI characters, they were here in the materials panel for a while, then they disappeared and got tucked over under the properties panel for text, so you had to sort of work around to use them if you wanted to. I think it's good that they're back in the materials panel where you can type in the text that you want them to speak, choose your character, Hey, good to see you. Pick the voice that you want to use. I'm an AI character. Select a frame. Hey, good to see you. I'm an AI character. And then come down here and click add. Now you might notice over here on the left, we see something that says credits needed and it has a zero and 12 crossed out. And if we hover over this little almost invisible question mark, it says one second equals four credits. Credits needed is estimated on the clip duration. No extra charge for voices and 180 credits off for first timers. And indeed what they've introduced here is a credit system for use of the AI characters that is above and beyond the pro subscription. I pay for a pro subscription, but if I want to use the AI characters, I might get into some credits. And I say might because they do give you 550 credits per month to start with. So let's do a little math here. If it costs me four credits for every one second that I want to use an AI character, if I have him on screen for one minute, 60 seconds times four credits is 240 credits. So I can get a little more than two minutes of AI character usage per month with my allotted credits. If I want more than my monthly allotted credits, it tells me I need to buy them on CapCut Mobile, which is something I don't even use, but that's okay, because I don't plan on buying credits anyway. But this little page does give us some other information, which is that if we want to use motion effects, that's going to be 49 credits per use, and if we want to use the AI effects, that'll be 100 credits per use. Oddly enough, on this window, it doesn't even mention that the AI characters require credits. And don't take my word for it right here on the screen is where it tells you that pro members get 550 subscription credits at the beginning of every subscription month and they can be used for pro AI features. Now back to adding the AI character to our project if we want to generate captions at the same time we're adding this character just check this box and when you're ready to run it go ahead and hit add and that's fun even though I selected no color up here in the background I still ended up with a black background. I'm an AI character with the AI characters clip selected, over here in the properties panel, I do get an AI characters menu tab. Now it looks like if I switch up my AI character for this clip, it's going to cost me 12 credits. If you remember when we first created him, it said 180 credits for our first use. So it looks like your first use up to 180 credits does not deduct from your credit balance. But if you do something like I did and create a clip that's just a couple seconds long, that would have only cost 12 credits. Well, I don't have 168 credits left of first time use for free because I chose to make my first time use just a 12 credit deal. And remember this is time based. So my one and a half second clip according to CapCut math takes 12 credits at four credits per second. 12 credits should cover three seconds and I'm getting about half that. Now I give them the benefit of the doubt that this is an incredibly small clip and they're doing an estimation of how long it's going to take to do this. 
So if they're off by one second on a minute long clip, that's not such a big deal. And the tiny little clip that I'm using might really exaggerate the ratio. There's one other thing in AI characters that I want you to see, and that is the ability to characterize yourself. Right here at the top left, you see this icon says pay per one. Now if you click on that rascal and open it up and you get this window that explains the process is you upload two videos of yourself or your subject and from the those two videos, it will generate an AI character of you or your subject. Now the cost for that is $29 to create and use your character for a month. And if you want to keep using it after that month, you're going to keep paying $29 a month to do it. If you're not happy with the way it turned out, you've got 15 days to re-customize it. And even though you're paying 29 bucks a month to create this character and have it available to you, it says when you add the character to your videos, you'll be charged by how long the character appears in the video. So apparently you're still going to be charged credits for using the character that you're paying for. And interestingly, down at the bottom, they have this $29 price showing again, and they've crossed out 49. I don't know if that's just a marketing gimmick or if they plan on bumping this price up to 49 at some point. I'm gonna pass on that. Now let's go look at a few things that might be of interest to free users. The transform, which is the scale of the video, the position, that's still there, it's free. You can still align things and blend, which is transparency. However, pretty much everything else on this menu is now a pro option. Stabilize, enhance image, reduce image noise, relight, auto reframe, remove flickers, AI movement, camera tracking, motion blur, all of those are pro options. Remove background, we've heard from many people that auto removal was showing up as now a pro feature. Feature, and indeed it is, as well as custom removal, which has been pro for quite a while. Now, free users do still have chroma key. Now, as a free user, you can adjust the intensity and the shadow, but if you want to feather the edge or clean up the edge, Sorry, gotta be pro for that. I just think that's kind of mean. They're limiting your background removal options down to chroma key as it is, and then tell you, nope, you don't even get the tools to make that work pretty well unless you're a pro user. If we have the chroma key box clicked, coming down to the bottom, we have something called AI background free. You get a permission request that says, allow CopCut to upload your photos to our server to generate AI backgrounds. Once generated, your photos will be immediately deleted from our servers. Okay, knock yourself out. And what you have here is an AI image generator. So if you wanna muddle through chroma key without the AI features of feathering the edges and cleaning up the edges, then hey, you get to pick your own AI generated background. We take a look at the properties for a photo, transform and blend remain free, enhance image, reduce image noise, and AI expand are all pro. AI replace says try free. And we have a little note down here that says to free use. When you check the box, you get this really clear permission request, PC remove video permission JY, allow or not now, whatever the hell that means. This is something you'd use if you wanted to maybe change the sweater to a blue dress or you wanted to change your hair to blonde, but it's unclear to me whether this is a pro feature that free users get two free uses of or whether this is going to be one of their credit deals where it takes credits every time you use it. Same thing with AI remove, two free use, try free. It doesn't say whether that's going to take credits or be a pro feature. Coming back to a video clip, speed and animation seem to have remained the same, although there may be some of these animations that have gone from free to pro. I can't really say. I don't keep track of those. On the adjustment tab, auto adjust, color match, and color correction are all pro. LUTs do not appear to be pro, and you can manually make adjustments using these sliders here. I've gone through all the other video properties tabs, and I don't see a whole lot of change in there. For audio, if we select an audio clip. The basic properties, volume, fade in, fade out, those remain free. However, pretty much everything else is a pro feature. Normalize loudness, enhance voice, audio translator, reduce noise and vocal isolation. And if you're a pro user that wants to use audio translator, this is another one of the features that is gonna require credits. You get the 550 AI credits at the beginning of each subscription month, but there are quite a few AI features that will eat up these credits if you decide to use those features. 
In the case of the audio translator, one credit for a quarter of a second. So in this little clip, I've got four seconds to translate. It'll cost 16 credits. So it's four credits per second. I don't know why in the AI characters they say four credits per second, and here they say one credit for a quarter of a second. Other than, I guess they're charging this in quarter second increments, and they're charging the AI characters in full second increments. Under the voice changer, the voice filters, there are still some of those that are free. The voice characters, you have a few of those that are free. And then the singing voices, the only one that's available for free is folk, probably the least used out of all these. Back to the materials panel, not much has changed in the audio section. The layout and everything still remains the same. There may be changes to which of these clips is pro versus free at this point. I just don't keep track of all the hundreds that are in there and whether they're free or pro. For the text, the menu layout remains the same. If you want to generate an AI text style, that remains free at this point. I've not been impressed with it and honestly never use it. Plenty of text effects. Some are limited to just pro and some are available for free. No major updates to the text templates. Auto captions had me confused to begin with. Initially I thought, oh, okay, there's no pro up here telling me that auto captions is now a pro feature. It's bilingual and filler words that are pro feature. When you come down here to generate your auto captions, you see that it is a pro feature. So no more auto captions for free users. The stickers, I don't see any major changes in those. AI generated stickers for what they're worth still remain free and you still have a library of stickers. Some are pro, some are free. Effects, it appears there have been a few new added to this list and some indeed have shuffled from the free to the pro subscription requirement. And the same with body effects. Under the transitions, I can't tell you specifically, but I know there have been some new ones added in here. I've found a few while I'm editing that I'm like, oh, that's new. I've never seen that before. One thing that CapCut is well known and popular for is the number of interesting transitions they have that are not just things that look like PowerPoint circa 1993. In addition to being under text, Captions has its own tab. That seems to have come and gone in different versions of CapCut. I don't know if it's here to stay now in 4.3.0b, but here it is again, another way to get to the captions. But auto captions, like we said, is now a pro feature. Under the captions, you do have templates. There's a whole variety of things here. And I do believe they've added some new options here, just like with the transitions. From within this captions area of the media panel, there's a generate captions button here, but it doesn't say pro or anything like that. If you already have the transcription finished and you've got a track for your captions, you can style them using one of the free templates here. If you're not a pro user and you select one of these free caption styles, but you don't have it transcribed, and you don't have the text in here on a caption track or subtitle track, I'm assuming it won't work. I can't really test that. You've also got an auto lyrics feature, so click on that, pick the language, and I guess if you're a pro user, you'd be able to generate the lyrics as captions. No major changes to the filters. The adjustment option from the media panel remains pretty much the same. The templates that I guess somebody uses, I don't know, it's all a waste to me. Maybe it's good for TikTok, but what I found with the templates is the only thing you can change is which pictures or clips you put in them. Everything else stays the same and that just doesn't work for me at all. I don't see any of them that require a pro subscription. And to show you what version I'm working with here, it is 4.3.0 beta test version four. If you're seeing something different than everyone else, it's likely because you're using a different numerical release version or you're using desktop versus web or something like that. And this is one of my two main beefs with CapCut. One is the horrible communication about what is actually changing in from one version to another, or what the comparison, what the differences are. And my other beef is the constant moving around of things. Now look, I'm not gonna jump on the bandwagon of every feature should be free. I get it, when you're getting something for free, you can't really demand that they include every feature. Since I pay for a subscription, I don't really have that issue, but I do definitely sympathize with those that have come to rely on some of the free features to see them disappear. And I don't think it's cool that CapCut just keeps moving existing features that have been free for a long time into the pro version in a way that's not incredibly logical. It might make more sense if everything AI was gonna be a paid feature and all the basic editing stuff was gonna be free 
that doesn't seem the direction they're going. It looks like they have free, which is scaling back to being very, very basic. Pro for additional, not only features, but additional selections within those features, like different transitions and effects and whatnot. And then certain AI things, not all AI things, but certain AI things are gonna be credit-based beyond your paid subscription. So I'm not blasting CapCut, my point is, it's confusing, it's poorly communicated, and I wish they'd do better with that. I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.